You know, it feels like the Funko Company has been getting better and better each year. Every year we see pops from so many movies, TV shows, cartoons, and much more. As of now, I'd have to consider 2019 as Funko's best year. With lots of new licenses, a new board game, a new store in Hollywood, and even a Funko movie in the works, things seem to be going super well for the company. For those who don't know my channel, I am a big pop collector, and this year had lots to admire. So before I get to the lists, I must mention that I'm going to announce what I consider to be the best 10-inch pop, town, multi-pack, deluxe, moment, and ride pop of the year, then conclude it with my top 20 individual pops. And remember, with all of my top lists that I do on this channel, this is my opinion. Some of these pops, you'll be kind of like, what? Why do you like this? Why isn't it this? But I have my opinions. You have yours. Please don't be salty about this list. These are just what I think are the best. Though, feel free to comment below what your favorite pops of the year are. With that said, let's get on to the list, starting with the best 10-inch pop. I'll admit, I'm not a fan of the 10-inch pops, but I will say that some of them do look good. Some look good with no changes from the original, some look good with changes from the original, but my favorites are when they take an originally big or 6-inch pop and make it 10 inches, making them more accurate. So for my favorite 10-inch pop, I went with the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. This is a GameStop exclusive, which doesn't make as much sense as being a Target exclusive, but I guess it's refreshing to see a 10-inch pop that's not a target. When they first made the Ghostbuster pops in 2014, he was 6 inches, which made sense, but the 10-inch pop is way more accurate to his size in the movie. They also make big improvements on his design. That large body, and especially the face, really look good on him. If I were to own any 10-inch pop, it'd be this. Now, I'm an even lesser fan of the Pop Town. I feel like the buildings are too unnecessary and don't scream Funko Pop to me. I'd just rather get the Pop character on its own. But anyway, only two stood out to me this year. One of them was Fang with Hagrid's Hut. I do like the design of the hut, the detail with the bricks and the moss-covered roofs, and even Fang is cute, but I don't know much about Harry Potter. So my favorite Pop Town of the year is Kevin with the house from Up. I've seen this in person and it's really big. The house is really iconic. I will admit that there is a small amount of balloons, but I think adding more would cause some problems to the structure. I like the look of Kevin too. I just wish he was sold on his own. There were a lot of multi-packs that I liked this year, like the Lion King main hyenas, the black and white Gomez and Morticia Adams, King and Kodos, the Weasley siblings at the Quidditch World Cup, and the Splash Mountain 3-pack. I do want to talk about this runner-up, and that's the Samurai Jack 2-pack. I really like how Funko conveyed Gendy Tartatovsky's style, especially on Jack, and Aku just looks awesome. Funko did a good job with making Aku taller than Jack, a great 2-pack that I wish was more common, but I feel like my pick for best multi-pack is what lots of other people will pick as well, and that's Carl and Ellie from Up. As one of this year's SDCC's most popular pops, it's no wonder why this pack gets so much praise. It's not hard to say that the first 15 minutes of the movie is the most memorable part, which includes Carl and Ellie as young children. These two are just perfect. The outfits, the body sizes, and even the big details like the balloon and book easily make these two some of the best pops this year. It'd be a crime to not make this a multi-pack, and Funko knocked it far out of the park with this. There were some deluxe pops that surprised me this year. Some standouts include Mount Lady, Bastion, Tyrion on the Iron Throne, and the Shark Biting Quint. But my favorite this year was the Glow in the Dark Dragon Maleficent. I was upset to see that the original Dragon Maleficent was not only a subscription box exclusive, but around $100 on her own if you went to eBay. That's why I was so glad to not only see how easy it was to get this one, but to see the extras they gave it. The glowing base, the green flamethrower, the way they make her eyes, mouth, and nostrils glow. This pop was too amazing to ignore. It remains one of the only pops I waited in line for. 
While not a big fan of this series, I feel like Funko did a good job with the moments line last year, and this year had a lot of good ones too, like Scar with the Flames, Batman and Catwoman, Dagobah Face Off, Batman and Robin on the Rooftop, and Kiss the Girl. Washington Crossing the Delaware is not only a runner-up, but a super close second. This is such an iconic painting slash moment in history, and Funko did an outstanding job on it. I love how they make each of the figures have something that makes them stand out. The guy paddling the boat, the other guy holding the flag, and George Washington standing on the edge. This pop moment was so great that it was almost a tie, but I'd have to say that my favorite moment of the year, by the slightest amount, is the Battle of Fallen Angels. What makes me like this more than Crossing the Delaware is the more extreme posing and set. The dark colors, that stained glass in the back, it makes this moment stand out more. Plus I feel like the pops are more well designed and the poses are just really cool. So a close close tie, but I think I'd call this one the winner. To be honest, not a lot of rides impressed me this year, so I'll give my opinion on all three I selected. Han Solo and the Millennium Falcon is really iconic and perfect for a ride, though the colors don't really stand out and I'm not a fan of that stand. I know the Star Wars Pops has special stands, but they should have made it like the other flying rides, so when you display it, or even play with it, it looks like it's really flying. I really like what Funko did with this Woody with RC ride, the way they conveyed RC's design. I even like how they made Woody look tiny and how he's sitting on RC controlling him. The execution is just great here. But my favorite ride of the year is Moana on the boat. Like with the Millennium Falcon, the vehicle is pretty iconic, but it's the extra details that make me like this more. With Moana's pose, it really looks like she's controlling the sail. The wind blowing through her hair looks really nice, the addition of Pua and Hai Hai also really makes this my favorite ride of the year, but I guess this ride wasn't that popular as I still see it at my box lunch. And that concludes my side lists as we move on to my favorite individual pops of the year. But first, a quick slideshow of honorable mentions. These pops barely made it on my list, but I feel like they should be glanced at for its execution. Now, I tried my hardest to make it a top 10 list, but there were once again so many pops I liked this year that I can't help but make it a top 20. So let's get started. Many, many Batman pops were made to celebrate Batman's 80th anniversary, and one of my favorites is the 1989 Batman. One of my favorite superhero movies ever, I couldn't resist getting this pop. If you saw my best Funko Pop Remix video, I'd say that this is Funko's third attempt at making the Michael Keaton Batman, and they really improved it with this. The design of the suit, the mask, the execution is perfect on this one. Weirdly enough, my next pick is Batboy. As the winning design of the Fantastic Plastic Contest, Batboy is really adorable. While not as wacky as the other spastic plastic pops, Batboy is well designed with a good paint job and a super cute look. Not one that everyone is going to praise, but I really like cute characters. Speaking of my Funko Pop remakes list, if I were to make the list now, one that would definitely be on there is the long-nosed Pinocchio. 
I know that there are obvious differences from the original pop, but the body and hair are instantly much better for this model. What also makes this pop stand out is the tiny Jiminy Cricket on his nose. If you take a closer look at the figure, and you see the face on Jiminy, it's perfect for the situation being displayed. Easily one of the best Disney pops this year. Being the only games pop on my list, I went with Arsene from Persona 5, if that's how you pronounce it. I only know Arsene as that creature that comes out when Joker gets a full meter in Smash Bros. Ultimate, but I do like the badass design of it. The wings, the body, the entire head, it looks great. I wish I knew more about this character, but I do have some interest in wanting to try this game out. Nothing much else to say. For those who saw my favorite Pops of 2018 video, I think I said I am a sucker for Pops based on real people, and this year had some good ones, including Edgar Allan Poe. Of the two versions that exist, I like the Books A Million exclusive. This one, he's holding a raven in his hand, easily a reference to his most famous work. With Pops based on icons, it doesn't take much effort to make it recognizable, but Funko really did a good job with this one. The hair, the simple iconic facial features, I just love Pops based on real icons. I know I have to get him soon. With X-Men being Funko's longest running Marvel series, I think, there were of course some good ones, but the victor this year goes to the Hot Topic exclusive Dark Phoenix. Here she's on a fiery stand, she's got wings made of flames on her back. This easily makes her the best looking Phoenix pop of them all so badass and intimidating. The only problem I have with this pop is I wish they didn't make so much of her. Hot Topic priced it at $14.50, which is two more dollars than a normal pop sold at Hot Topic, and right now this pop online is much cheaper than retail price, which kind of sucks. It's so much, and I feel like this pop should be worth more because of all the detail on it, but just a small nitpick that doesn't affect this badass awesome design. Going back to the Batman Pops, I say that the best design of them all is the Merciless Batman. I don't read comics, so I've never heard of this version of Batman, but man, this Batman looks so cool. While the colors are simple, there's no denying that this look is creepy in the best way. The shape of the helmet, that sword, those red eyes. This is easily one of the most creative Batman Pops. I feel like it's a good move on Funko to make it have a metallic shine, since it looks like Knight's armor. Such a cool looking Batman in a long list of mini Batman pops this year. This is going to be a weird pick, but for this spot I put the Merlion statue. This is a real statue in Singapore. Funko has made a pop of the Merlion statue before, but here they have a fountain of water emitting from its mouth. While the design isn't as accurate and more cute, than the old Merlion Pops, I just love the addition of the water. It makes the pop more like a statue and less like a creature. It would be interesting to see what other statues Funko will convert into pop form. For this spot, I put the Chase version of the Jeopardy host Alex Trebek. The common Alex is him currently, and the Chase is a younger version of him. Of course, most of the time, Chase versions look better than the common, but this is one of the most interesting ideas I've seen for a Chase, and it makes sense as Jeopardy has been one of the most popular televised game shows in American history. The detail of changing the card to an older Jeopardy card makes this Chase even better. While the pop is simple, I just think the idea of de-aging characters for the Chase is so awesome. I hope Funko does more Chases like this in the future. After many months of waiting, the pop of the Struts lead singer Luke Spiller did not disappoint. I really like the Struts, and the lead singer has such a good voice and cool personality. After seeing the announcement of the Struts Funko serial, I was waiting for a pop to be made. Like with Edgar Allan Poe, it doesn't have to be complex to be recognizable, but Funko did a great job with this one. The hair is one of the best hair jobs Funko has done. The outfit is simple but nicely painted. I just love this pop, a pop that I was really hyped for and was worth it.
Now entering the top 10, I'm starting with The Hulk from Avengers Endgame. This is from the scene where he gives Ant-Man some tacos, and since he's so big, he holds them between his fingers. A short, cute scene, and Funko did a good job with this one. I really wanted a Smart Hulk pop to be made after I saw the movie, and this pop is just perfect. It's so perfect that I can't find it anywhere. I've searched many stores and haven't been successful in finding it, but oh well, one day I'll find it. My Hero Academia strikes my top 10 list once again, this time I put Weekend All Might. This box lunch exclusive looks really incredible with its detail. The hair, the face, that body is amazing with the drooping suit, that buff right arm with the skinny left arm, and like the Maleficent pop, the glow is incredible. The blue suit, the hair, the eyes and teeth, while never seeing an episode of this show, My Hero Academia has some of the best pops in my opinion, I might actually want to own this one in the future. Being the first Arnold Schwarzenegger pop in a while, this damaged T-800 is almost the perfect pop for Terminator fans. The red eye, the light blood splatter, that exposed robot skull, this pop perfectly shows what a Terminator is to people who don't know what one is. While I've never seen any Terminator movie before, I don't think this pop could have looked any better. I think this pop is a good example of even when it comes from a poorly received movie, the pop can still look cool with enough effort and creativity put into it. With being my favorite chase of the year, I went with the Angus Young chase. I think this pop resembles closest to his look on the album cover for the ACDC album Highway to Hell, and I just think the Angus Young pop is so cool, even the common. The duck walk pose, the hair, the schoolboy outfit, the guitar. This makes Angus Young my favorite pop of the entire Rocks line, which is saying a lot. As being one of my most wanted pops ever, it certainly exceeded my expectations. The Ad Icons line just gets better and better each year, and the victor for me is easily the common Colonel Sanders pop. This pop couldn't have looked any better. I find the common better than the exclusive with the cane. It's because when I think of an ad icon, I like it when they're shown with their product. When I think of KFC, I think of fried chicken. So it makes more than enough sense for him holding a bucket of his own chicken. If I were to nitpick at one thing, the black bar holding his glasses in the middle is a little thick, but doesn't ruin the design at all. Not much to say here, just such an iconic face in the world of advertising that came out as a spot-on perfect pop. Some of my favorite Marvel pops are the unmasked kind, and my favorite one this year goes to the Hot Topic exclusive Mysterio. The Mysterio pop already looks amazing, with the detail on the armor and that cool looking cape, but I like the design of Jake Gyllenhaal's head. The hair and that beard mustache combo is really cool. Some may prefer the helmet, but I just really like unmasked superhero pops. So glad I was able to find them right before the end of the year. This might be a strange pop to list so high up, but I went with the Funko Shop exclusive Garfield. There is a common Garfield, but I think this Garfield is just too perfect. Normally, he's very lazy, and this pop perfects his lazy look. The low arms, those tired-looking eyes, that frown. It's just so perfect that it's incredible. Also, I love the I Hate Mondays mug he's holding. Very simple pop, but so perfect in every way. A real surprise for me. Now, a pop from this show was bound to be on a list like this since there were so many. And surprisingly, this NYCC exclusive Dwight Troop pop made it to my number 3 spot. The Dwight pop looked good already, but the addition of the bobblehead really made it surpass the rest. I don't know if this is from an actual episode of the show, but I find it cute when a character is holding memorabilia of themselves. It almost looks like a pop that Funko would make for fun that isn't based on a specific scene, like Batman with the Comic-Con bag or something like that. Such a cute idea that really surprised me on how much I really liked it. Now, I'm surprised that not a lot of people talk about this pop, and that's the San Diego Comic-Con Forrest Gump. With the huge wave of Tom Hanks pops rolling in this year, 
This is easily my favorite. This is from the iconic moment of Forrest Gump's run across America. He's got the red cap on, the yellow shirt and red pants, that huge hair. I even love how his shoes are brown and dirty, including that awesome running pose. Though, one problem with this pop is the paint on the beard. I had to look at like 10 different pops to find one with an acceptable paint job, but paint is something I nitpick on all the time. Another nitpick I have is I wish they added the Bubba Gumps logo on the cap like in the movie. I guess if the Bubba Gumps company allowed it, they would, but it doesn't ruin how awesome this pop is for me. An underrated pop in my eyes, and a winner of the silver medal. And now onto my favorite pop of the year, my most anticipated pop this year, and that was the PX exclusive Miles Morales. For those who don't know, I love Into the Spider-Verse. It's one of my favorite animated and comic book movies of all time. I fell in love with the Miles hooded outfit and in pop form, it looks just as cool. The scene where he's wearing the suit is so awesome that it's one of my favorite scenes in the movie. I'll admit that when I saw the glam, I wasn't a fan of the jump pose. After seeing it in person, that fear completely went away. I can't stop loving this pop. This is one of the coolest pops I've ever seen, and is definitely my favorite pop of the year. And that's my list of my favorite Funko Pops of the year. Once again, Funko had a really outstanding year with so many new licenses and big successes. Hopefully we'll get more creative pops like these in the future. So thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. Also, comment down below what your favorite pops of the year are. Consider subscribing for more top lists and pop videos as well as other content. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.